Xcode, Sample Project Simple Zen Meditation, Part 3. In the last chapter, we have seen how to connect the UI elements added in the Interface Builder file to the class of the Simple Zen Meditation application. In that chapter, we have also seen how to bring the button toggle effect using two buttons in a simple way. We can see that the project Simple Zen Meditation is open from where we have left it in the last chapter. First, let's build and run the application to see the current status of the application. We can see that the application contains the various UI elements we need on the screen. We can also see the UI picker view with two components, interval and duration, and the corresponding contents populated. As we can see, the button actions are working fine, and also we can scroll the picker view. Let's stop this and move forward. Open the view controller implementation file. Here we have to implement the remaining delicate method of UI Picker View, which will be triggered when a particular row of the picker is selected. We use the delicate method Picker View Did Select Row in Component for this. Here the parameters are the Picker View object whose delegate is this method. The index of the selected row and the index of the component whose row is selected will be passed to this delegate method when a row is selected. At first, we are going to update a label on the screen with the duration component which is selected. So we can write the code to return from the method if the component is interval, as we are interested in durations at the moment. So we write the condition in such a way that if the component index is 1, then we will return from this method. Otherwise, let's create an NS string object. Based on the row index of the durations component selected, give the corresponding duration values for the string object. Here we are using the switch statement to implement this. At the end of the method, let's set the text of the label we have added just below the picker view to the string object we have initialized. The set text method of the label is used for implementing this. Open the Interface Builder file and position the label to its place after repositioning other elements. Let's also clear the text of the label in the Attributes Inspector. Now run the application. We can see that the label text is getting updated based on the value we selected in the Picker view. Let's open the Interface Builder file and increase the frame and font size of the label. Run the application and we can see the modification in effect. We can reposition the whole element to the position we need by positioning it in the Interface Builder file. The modifications we make in the Interface Builder will take effect once we run the application. We can do this until we get the desired layout. Once the layout is ready, we can see how to add audio to the app. We will be using audio in this app as background music and also as meditation alarms. In order to get an audio resource from the project, we have to use the path for resource of type method of the NS bundle class. The parameters given for this method will be the name of the audio file and its file extension. In this case, the name of the file is dong and the file extension is calf. This method will return the whole path of the resource as a string. Next step is to convert this path string to a URL. This can be done using the file URL with path method of the NSURL class. Now we have the URL of the audio resource ready. Now we have to play the audio file in this URL. This can be done using the AV Audio Player class. We have to create an AV Audio Player object using its alloc in it with contents of URL error method. The first parameter given to this method is the URL of the audio resource that we have created just now. The second parameter is the error, which we can give as nil. Now we have to set the delegate of this object to self so that the delegate methods we implement will be linked to this object as well. Assign this player object to the global player object and release the temporary object if automatic reference counting ARC is not enabled in the project. Use the prepare to play method of AV audio player method to load the audio files to the memory. If we are not doing this, then there will be a delay while the player starts playing the music. We are getting error now because we haven't declared the global player object yet. Add the getter and setter methods for this object using at property and at synthesize directives in interface and implementation files respectively. 
Do the same for the background, final player objects. Create the AV audio player object for those with the corresponding audio files for the players how we did earlier. Next we have to save the interval and duration for the meditation. Let's write a method which will create the full file path to be saved. Inside this method, use the NS search path for directories in domain method to get the list of paths where we can save the file in iOS. The parameters passed to this method are NS documentation directory, NS user domain mask, and a boolean value which denote expand or not. We give NS documentation directory to use the save location as the documents folder of the application. This method returns an array with a set of paths that are available for us to use for saving. We are interested only in the first path. We can obtain the final path to save the plist file by appending the plist name with extension at the end of the first path component in the array. Since we want to save the interval and duration when the application terminates, we have to use the application will terminate lifecycle method. Inside this method, let's set the value for is idle timer disabled property of UI application to no in order to enable the sleeping of the device. Next, we have to get the current row selected in the interval and duration components to a string for saving. The selected row in component method of the picker view object can be used to get the currently selected row of the component in question. Now we have to create an array with these two string values. The resultant array can be writhed to a location using the write to file atomically method. The object to be written is used to call the method. The first parameter is the location with the file name to be saved for the object. The second parameter is a boolean value which is set to yes to save the file atomically. This is how we can save the score in Xcode. The saved file will be located in the documents directory of the app.